Hello, chillers. It's Tuesday again, and this is the first Tuesday in March. So here is another episode of True Crime and Chill for you, Supernatural style. Welcome back, chillers, to another episode of True Crime and Chill. You may notice that I am missing my co-host this week. Alex had to take this week off for work, so I'll be going this one alone, and I'm going to do the best that I can without her. If you haven't been following us for a while, let me catch you up to speed. The first Tuesday of the month, we like to bring you a supernatural case of some kind. And a few months back, one of our listeners on our Facebook group page suggested we do urban legends from each state. This week, I went to research Arizona, and an urban legend came to my attention that has spanned history for many years across multiple countries and cultures, and it circulates what would be considered a true crime case today. Arizona's urban legend will have to wait because this week, I'll be talking about the legend of La Llorona, the weeping woman. I found many different versions of this story while doing my research. The first and most possibly common version that I found involved a woman who married above her means. Maria was poor, but fell in love and married a rich man who gave her love and attention and gifts. They had two sons. And as time went on, the man started to spend more and more time out of the home, seemingly returning to his womanizing ways. When he was home, he came only to spend time with the boys before leaving again. This left Maria feeling jealous of her sons. One day, Maria was out walking with her sons along the river, and a carriage pulled up carrying Maria's husband and an elegant woman. He took a few moments to speak to the boys, ignoring Maria, and then went on his way. The legend says that this caused Maria to go into a jealous rage, and she threw her sons into the river. As they disappeared downstream, she realized what she had done and ran down the bank to save them, but it was too late. Maria broke down into her grief, running down the streets, screaming and wailing. She mourned them day and night, never stopping to eat or sleep. She walked along the river in her white gown, searching for her boys, hoping they would come back to her. She cried and cried as she walked the riverbanks and her gown became dirty and tattered. Because she refused to eat, she grew thinner and appeared taller until she looked like a walking skeleton. Though she was still a young woman, she finally died on the banks of the river. Not long after her death, her restless spirit began to appear, walking the banks of the river at night. Her weeping and wailing became a curse of the night, and people began to be afraid to go out after dark. It is said that she is seen drifting between the trees along the shoreline or floating on the current with her long white gowns spread out on the waters. On dark nights, people would see her walking along the riverbank, crying for her children. And so, they no longer speak of her as Maria, but rather La Llorona, the weeping woman. Children are warned not to go out after dark, as La Llorona might snatch them, throwing them to their deaths in the flowing waters. Another version of the story says she did jump in after them, and she died trying to save them. Yet another version of the story tells that Maria was more or less a lady of the evening, or a prostitute, if you will. She was so beautiful, she caught the attention of all the men in the area. She spent her days surrounded by her humble surroundings, but in the evening, she would dress up in her finest white gown and go thrive on the attention of the men who admire her. However, Maria had two small sons who made it difficult for her to spend her evenings out, and often she left them alone while she danced with the gentlemen during the evenings. One day, the two small boys were found drowned in the river. Some say they drowned through her neglect, but others say they might have died from her own hand. Yet another telling was that La Llorona was a prostitute, and every time she would have a child, she would take it to a creek and drown it. Before long, she was murdered by one of her customers and sentenced by God to wander the rivers and streets of the world looking for her children. She became so upset that she cried and cried, eventually drying her eyes out, leaving two black holes where her eyes once were. And her mouth grew incredibly large, resembling that of a horse. The legend continues that if she heard a child crying, she would come for them thinking it was one of her own. Any way that the story is told, La Llorona is said to be mourning the death of her children. It's told as a story often to scare children into behaving. 
Be home before dark or La Llorona will get you. Quit crying or La Llorona will come here thinking you are missing children and get you. The legend says that she will capture children and when she realizes they are not hers, she kills them. But not all the stories depict her coming to take children away, mistaking them for her own. It's also said that she appears to men who cheat on their wives or children who fight with their parents. Those that hear her cries or see her are said to greet death or great misfortune soon after. The internet, being the wonderful thing that it is, I took to Reddit to find stories of people who have seen her or heard her. DJ Underdog 85, one year ago, wrote, One night, it was just like any other night. I lived in a trailer with my mom and dad. My youngest brother was staying with my aunt this night. I fell asleep watching Jay Leno as usual, and when I woke up, I was on the sofa in my living room. The time was 4 a.m., which illuminated from the stove in the kitchen. The television was off, and normally I had a light on, but this time it was pitch black. I woke up and I heard a horrible screaming that was coming from far in the distance. The screaming was coming from a ditch that was a few feet away from my home. I heard it and I thought I was hearing things. I asked myself, am I dreaming? Then I started to hear the animals outside howling and whimpering. These animals that I speak of are cats and dogs. As the screaming got closer, the animals continued to cry. The screaming was something I have never experienced ever before. It sounded like I was in a big hallway and a woman was screaming her guts out down the hallway. Then in all the screaming, I started to make out the words. These words being said by whoever this was at 4 a.m. screaming their guts out shocked me. The woman said, ay, mis hijos, or in English translated to, oh, my children. In a huge panic, I quickly got up from the sofa and ran to the kitchen, which was right next to where I was asleep. I turned the closest light and looked around. The screaming didn't stop. In fact, the screaming only got louder and closer. I questioned my sanity at the moment. Was it going crazy or hearing things? Then I thought to myself, this is real, and the animals are responding to it in a negative way. So I did what any other 11-year-old boy would do in a moment like this. I ran to my mom and dad's room. I reached for my mom and shook her awake wildly. She woke up slowly, and to my amazement, the screaming faded away as she woke awake. I thought to myself, what the heck is going on? I told my mother, mom, do you hear that screaming and crying lady? My mom was half asleep, and she said, go back to sleep. It's most likely your imagination. I told her, no, this is real. Please listen. Don't you hear her? My mom quickly just said, you are dreaming, so go back to sleep. It's going to be okay. By then, the screaming had faded long away, like if whoever was screaming knew that an adult is awake. I was terrified as I returned to the living room and quickly turned on the television as I left most of the lights on as well. I didn't go back to sleep until the sun came up. I couldn't believe what I'd heard and witnessed. I was treated like a crazy person whenever I told my story. It got so bad that I kept my experience to myself. To this day, I don't care what people think of my experience. I know what I heard. A couple of years later, it happened to me again, but that's a whole other story. Dela Curls, one year ago, wrote the following story. All right, so this story has been told to me by my mom a few times. And every single time, I still get that creepy, eerie feeling that someone's watching me. My mom is from a small town in Mexico, located in Zacatecas. When she was around 14, she had a habit of waking up her mom to go to the restroom since it was an older home and the restroom was located outside. My mom tells me that it was around 3 a.m. when she woke up and felt the need to use the restroom urgently. So she began calling out for her mom. After a while of her mom not responding, she began getting agitated and started screaming. At this point, my mom turns around and at the foot of her bed, she sees her mom standing there. She was wearing a white robe, but had a very bleak expression on her face, and both of her arms were extended. My mom said she suddenly felt extremely cold and a huge sense of dread. She had never seen her mom wear a white robe. That's when she looked and saw her mom's feet weren't touching the floor. At that moment, she screamed and quickly threw the covers over her head. Her mom, wearing something completely different, runs in to find my mom shaking in her bed. Nobody believed my mom. Everyone told her it was a dream. Until a few days later, there was a power outage. 
During this, my mom and a few of her siblings with her parents all decided to sleep in the living room. Around the same time, at 3 a.m., they heard the same undeniable wails of a La Llorona down their street. None of them slept that night. The last story I have to share comes from Deliriousus a year ago, and they write, So last night I was having fun reading and commenting on the various replies on this story about the La Llorona, since I enjoy reading about supernatural stuff. I went to bed just before midnight when I can no longer understand what I'm reading due to sleeplessness. Ha ha. I'm sharing a bedroom with my sister, and just around 2 to 3.30 a.m., I guess the time range since the living room lights were off, which means my brother was already asleep and my mother isn't awake yet. I was awakened by my sister running out of her room with all of her blankets and pillows. I didn't bother to ask her why she ran, and I just went back to sleep since the night was so calm and quiet. I didn't think there was any danger if she didn't wake me up. Morning came, and she told me what happened. She heard a woman crying by our window last night. She said that her cries sounded alternately between being far and near, and that my sister's sure it wasn't a cat in heat since between cries there was sobbing and shortness of breath. We do have two female neighbors in a house about 20 feet away from ours, so it might just be them, but it'd be awkward to ask them if they were crying so loud last night. I did not tell my sister that I was reading about La Llorona last night, as she is such a scaredy cat. It's highly coincidental that this happened, so I understand why my post had been removed. Somebody had posted this, and then it was removed, so they reposted it in the comments. There were plenty of people on the message boards who said that many people, particularly those living in Mexico around Zacatecas, have a story or an encounter with La Llorona. So I did want to take a moment to discuss how Not only are there so many different variations of the story throughout many cultures, but also that they seem to all take place around water. Water has been known to be a strong supernatural conductor. So is it the tragedy that keeps her coming around? Or is it something to do with the water? Or is it that this tragedy happened in the water so it seemingly echoes across the ages? One thing I did find interesting is that in many of the videos I found that I will have on our webpage, truecrimeandchill.com, the sound of her cries all seem to be the same. They're the same pitch, the same tone, the same sort of length when she wails. You can hear how the sound seems to bother animals as lots of dogs start barking or whining when they hear it. Many of those in the Latina and Mexican culture seem to completely believe in La Llorona, but not necessarily ghosts or other ghost stories. Whether the legend is true or not, by today's standards, Maria would be tried and face serious consequences for her actions. It's also a reminder that some people use beliefs like this one to their advantage, playing sounds of what could be La Llorona outside a window and attacking when somebody comes outside to see what the noise is, or staging a sighting to post on the internet for their 15 minutes of fame. Is the legend true? If it is, did La Llorona die trying to save her children? Or did she die from her grief over what she had done? Is she really out there trying to find her children? Or is she out for revenge on men who cheat on their wives? What do you think? Thank you for listening to True Crime and Chill. For more information, including case notes, photos, and sources, please visit our website at truecrimeandchill.com. You can also stay connected with us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Look for new episodes from us each week on Tuesday.